In this world, from one day to the next, the temperature drops suddenly and becomes so cold that the vast majority of cities are under ice, and gradually supplies begin to run out. And if that weren't enough, fierce creatures begin to appear, hunting the human race, and even a simple chocolate is a luxury in that frozen world. Our protagonist survived for 28 weeks with his girlfriend, but as soon as the food ran out, she sent a guy to take him out. But blessed by the one above, he returns one day before all that began, and now he has the ability to survive high and low temperatures thanks to an extraterrestrial parasite. Now, he gathers thousands of resources and swears to repay those who hurt him in kind. The story begins by telling us that 28 weeks after the freezing, human nature is also frozen in this layer of ice, and we see a boy walking slowly through the frozen streets of the city, and he was our protagonist named Wang. He mentions that it seems that this area has not been explored, and he tells us that food and fuel were the most basic before, but now they were too valuable. He notices that under that thick layer of ice there was a city, and as he had to get to the other side, he was going to pass through there because it seemed safe. But suddenly, a strong earthquake occurs, causing the ice layer to begin to crack. Our protagonist's only thought at that moment is as if God were telling him that human civilization is as fragile as that thin layer of ice that cannot withstand even a single blow. Finally, the ground opens, and our protagonist is about to fall into the void, and he was aware that if he did, he would go with Jesus Tito. Wang obviously was not going to accept that, and like a warrior, he tries to hold on as best he can with his pickaxe. But it results in a total failure because it weighs too much, and without further ado, he ends up falling. But blessed by the one above, he falls onto the roof of a store that was covered in a lot of snow, which cushions his fall, and he narrowly escapes. He, of course, is relieved by this, but before celebrating prematurely, a huge creature stands in front of him. Our protagonist, upon seeing it, knew it was a white skin, and he was aware that if it caught him, it would be bad news because those things hunt humans wherever they are. He immediately stops and runs as if there were no tomorrow. While all this was happening, we see how some kind of parasite was observing them. Returning to Wang, we see that he was running out of energy, and the creature was going to take advantage of the opportunity to take him out, but suddenly, a stalactite pierces it in half. Our protagonist feels relieved because due to the intense noise, they fell. And fortunately, Tito Wang, who was more nearby than who knows what, ends up falling beside him. Some debris falls next to him due to the strong impact, and the snow ends up burying him alive. And the only thing that comes out of there is his hand. Suddenly, the mysterious parasite appears and slowly approaches him, where it stares at his hand fixedly and attacks him. But it turns out it wasn't like that because it merged with him. Finally, Tito Wang wakes up and wonders what happened, feeling a strange itch on his neck, but he doesn't notice anything unusual. A little calmer now, our protagonist knows it's time to go home, and as he finds a way out, he comes across a chocolate bar. After a while, we see him lift the lid of a tunnel, and he tells us that the vast majority of the city is covered by that thick layer of ice, and the only way back home is through that passage, and he wonders how long that will last. Finally, he arrives at his building and sees a bunch of people camping outside knowing that supplies are already scarce, and he can't imagine what those people will do when that happens. Wang realizes that those guys don't seem to be patrolling, so he should hurry to get home, and as soon as he arrives at his apartment, he knocks on the door, and a blonde girl ends up opening it. She immediately hugs him warmly upon seeing him, and with a smile, she mentions that she's happy he's returned safely, and curiously asks him if he missed her, Tito Wang. Flushed, he tells her that of course he quickly closes the door and asks her not to forget to lock it when she's gone. She tells him it's okay. He mentions that he brought her that little gift, the girl named Liang. Upon seeing it, she is surprised because it's chocolate. She gives him a kiss on the cheek and tells him he's the best while Wang prepares the fireplace. Li asks him if it's just one. He says yes and that he almost went with Jesus to get it. She doesn't believe that story because she noticed her backpack was full. Later, we see that Wang is worried because it's been days since they found decent food, and the only thing they have is that bag of seeds. It seems that what they planted isn't going well, and if they eat the seeds, they won't have any to plant later. If only this monster meat wasn't poisoned, people wouldn't have to go hungry, but at least its fat is good fuel, and they won't freeze to death. Wang realizes that today is Valentine's Day, where he prays because he forgot it, and he tells Leon that he regrets it but he notices that she's nowhere to be found. Suddenly, someone knocks on the door, and he knew it was her because it sounded like the code they invented. Without further ado, he goes to open it, but as he does, he receives a bat to the face that sends him flying to the ground, and it turns out that the one who did it was a guy named Lon, who was with Yang. 
Tito Wang, upon seeing her, yells at her why she betrayed him. She yells back at him, asking how he has the nerve to ask, and if he thinks he can deceive her with a piece of chocolate. She doesn't believe he hides the food because she saw his backpack full, and how is it possible that he lies to his girlfriend? She doesn't mention to our protagonist that as a man she feels sorry for him, so she'll give him advice. And it's that this isn't a civilized society, it's really the law of the jungle, and that there are only two options for the weak, to depend on the strong or to be devoured by them. With a smirk, she asks him to hand over all his food. Our furious protagonist yells at her that she doesn't know what she's talking about, that he only has a bag of seeds. Lon gets annoyed because he didn't cooperate, so he starts using him as his personalized punching bag. And his buddies also have fun doing it. After a while, our protagonist was about to leave with St. Peter. A guy tells his boss that the guy was telling the truth. Lon tells him it doesn't matter and asks him to pass him his dagger because today they'll eat meat. Our protagonist was already seeing the light, but he said he wanted to keep living and get revenge for what they did to him. The parasite tells him it's okay and he'll give him another chance. Suddenly, he wakes up very scared, shouting Lon's name, and as soon as he calms down a bit, he wonders why he's still alive. Suddenly, he sees the bustling city at night, and it turns out he returned 28 hours before the global freeze started. Tito Wong tells us that the protests continue in Queens and the police are coming in to maintain law and order. On the other hand, the magnates are having fun in their clubs, and the gangsters of Brooklyn are making deals in the lower neighborhoods, and no one in the city realizes what is about to happen, except for him. Our protagonist realizes that Aurora's Borealis started to appear, and they were the omen of the global freeze. Suddenly, he receives a call from Yang and remembers what she did to him. But in this life, he wasn't going to be so foolish as to fall again, but anyway, he answers and asks her what she wants. She asks him to lend her some money because her credit card is maxed out. Tito Wang doesn't pay attention to her, and all he mentions is that they're done and not to call him again. And without further ado, he hangs up because he has more important things to do. In the second chance, he had to prepare well because in the next 28 hours, the temperature would gradually decrease. And when that happens, people will know there's a problem and the situation will become chaotic. So he has an hour to gather provisions and some things to protect himself, like a weapon. After a while, our protagonist, he already gathered some and returns home to store them when suddenly a guy tells his police boss that that guy looks very suspicious. The chubby one agrees and asks our protagonist not to move and to put his hands up immediately. Tito Wang knew he messed up by cutting through a dangerous neighborhood, and they mistook him for a thief. The old man asks what he's holding in his hand, and Wang says it's just his phone. He was aware he didn't have time to waste, so he was going to cooperate. The rookie guy shouts at him to take out what he has in the backpack. Our protagonist tells him it's okay, and asks them not to get nervous because he's just an office worker and starts taking out slowly what he had. The kid gets scared and thinks he's armed and without hesitation opens fire. Tito Wang knew he was screwed and his second chance was going to end like this. But he wasn't going to accept it, where he gets upset, and his eye starts to change. And because of that, his body mutates and everything slows down. Wang is shocked by such madness and realizes how close the bullet is, but he dodges it by a hair and notices that the idiot got scared and shot more. So he was going to teach him a lesson because he didn't have time to waste. We see that he punches Refu in the face, but as time returns to normal, he sends him flying through the air. His boss, scared shitless, yells at him, asking what the hell our protagonist is. Wang mentions he doesn't know either, and without further ado, leaves. The chubby one reports that there's a fallen officer, and a suspect has fled with a gun. Our protagonist uses his superpower and quickly returns home. There he calms down, but he was aware that what just happened was complete madness. And how is it possible that he did that? And we see that he stole the officer's gun and he mentions that he will try again where he stands in front of a mirror and opens fire and activates his eye again. And that causes everything to slow down. And without any problem, he takes the bullet in his hands and is aware that he has superpowers and sees that there is a lot of white frost on his clothes. And he knows that must be because of the high speed and it's like he's a supersonic plane, where he is happy because not only did he travel in time, but he became stronger. Suddenly he hears the doorbell ring and as soon as he opens it, it's the landlady who was an old lady named Fun. She curiously asks if that was a gunshot. Our nervous protagonist tells her that it was just his television. She's relieved to hear it because lately there have been many robberies. And without further ado, she says goodbye and goes to her room next door. Tito Wong knows that the supplies he has are very few, so he must go to a supermarket to get more. A few minutes later, we see security cameras recording him, but suddenly he disappears in an instant. We see the cashier was acting completely normal. And suddenly the cash register spits out a long receipt, 
She sees it and notices that someone just bought everything. And at the end, it apologized and advised her to go home. Suddenly, some thieves enter the establishment. The waifu starts praying because lately she's had bad luck. The angry thieves shouted her to give them all the money. We see outside the ground was freezing and suddenly the windows break and a horrible creature enters the store. The scared rats immediately open fire, but that only tickles the monster. And it grabs the guy with green hair by the head and takes his face as a trophy. The trembling waifu hides where she can't be seen and records live what was happening. Changing the scene, we see some officers watching the stream and are shocked by such madness, but a man named Keon tells his friend it must be fake. Suddenly, they hear an alarm where they asked all citizens to pay attention, and it's because an unexplained cold wave is occurring. So they ask them to keep doors and windows closed and not to go out for anything. Returning to our protagonist, we see he was closing the windows completely with boards like a carpenter, avoiding the cold. Meanwhile, we see that Lon's men were beating up a guy with teary eyes. He mentions that he doesn't know anything. Lon shows him a photo of him with a girl, and it turns out the guy gave her magic mushrooms and had fun with her. And apparently he was his relative. The nervous guy apologizes because he didn't know Titan tells him that it doesn't matter anymore. And only God will see if he is saved where his boys take the guy's hand. And we see how Lon was holding a dagger three Doritos later. We see that he liked to collect fingers. One of his subordinates asks his boss what do they do with the guy. He mentions that his punishment is fire and they just throw him into the cauldron. They of course obey their boss. One of them tells his buddy that those cauldrons are old, and if they don't explode when they put that, his brother tells him to relax. The nervous guy shouts that something is wrong, and we see how the cauldron ends up exploding. His buddy goes to help him, but the guy was in, so he was in front of him returning Tito Wang. We see that he finally finished building his pots to plant and planted a few seeds. He was aware that the supplies they had were not enough. That's why he created a self-sustaining place and knew that everything was fabulous but he still had many things to finish and was going to put on a hard-working mode. But suddenly someone knocks on the door, and as soon as he opens it, he notes that it was Mr. K, his companion. He asks him what's going on. He tells him that as he knew the temperatures are decreasing, and the cauldron apparently broke, and they came to see if he could help them repair our protagonist remembers that in his past life as he arrived very late, the cauldron was impossible to repair, and that's why he wasn't going to make the same mistake and tells them to count on him. A few minutes later, Mr. K asks the protagonist, where are you going? He mentions that if the cauldron isn't upstairs, he tells him downstairs and stays on the ground floor. Wang remembers that Mrs. Fang told him that the cauldron was made illegally, that's why it was there. And without further ado, he heads there as soon as they arrive. Tito Wan notices that the smoke is very strange as if it were air conditioning, but he doesn't pay attention and gets down to work to repair the cauldron. But as soon as he opens it, he sees a strange liquid and remembers that it was from a white skin. And he is very surprised that the creature hits Mr. K's companion with a swipe. And since he was hungry, he, he begins to devour the old man K, leaving them in shock at seeing such a horrifying monster. Our protagonist realizes that they were also going to take him down. Of course, he was not going to allow it. He activates his powers and arrives in time to save him, and as best he can, tries to escape. Just as he was about to reach the door, he notices that the fierce creature had caught up with him, despite stopping time. Tito Wang knew that at this rate, they were both going to be screwed, and he was aware that he had to reach him to take Mr. K. The only way to get out alive was by letting go, but he wasn't going to do it willingly. With all his strength, he sends him flying towards the door, and now they were alone, the protagonist and the monster. Tito Wang knew that there were conditions that invalidated his ability, like carrying extra weight. The creature, noticing his distraction, was going to take advantage to brush him off. Once he was ready, he sends him flying, and due to such destructive power, the creature is taken down. Tito Wang screams that it seems like the old prey became the hunter, and he knows that his attack was effective as long as the target had energy. He could accelerate it. Even a small seed would be a weapon for him. Suddenly, blue liquid starts coming out of his eye. Wang wonders what the hell is happening, and gradually, that liquid increases beside him, and as he expelled so much, he ends up fainting. With his last strength, he notices how Mr. K comes to help him. After a while, he opens his eyes a bit again and hears a woman mentioning that they couldn't take him to the hospital because it was too cold outside. Mr. K yells at the others to close the doors. The old fan who had arrived orders him to immediately look for Dr. Chow. After a while, he notices that he's in some sort of operating room. A woman asks Mr. Kian to leave because she'll treat him shortly. And when they are alone, she whispers that the subject seems to be some kind of frozen man, and due to fatigue, she closes her eyes again, 
Resuming with Dr. Chow, we see that she mentions that the patient has symptoms of poisoning and is currently in a coma. Additionally, vital signs are abnormal and his body temperature remains at 10 degrees, but there are no anomalies in pulse and reflexes. The centrifuge finally stops and Dr. Chow goes immediately to see the results and is greatly surprised to find impurities in his blood. But that wasn't there before putting it in the centrifuge and she was curious to know what it was, but it would take time to analyze the sample. She checks on the protagonist, and anyone would think from afar that they are veins. But if one looks closely, those things seem to be some kind of allergic reaction. Finally, our protagonist wakes up, and the first thing he sees is a woman in front of him. She suggests that he not move for the moment. Tito Wang obeys her orders but asks who she is. She laughs and mentions that she's just an ordinary unlicensed doctor, and for some reasons, she can't tell him her name, but she can tell him Chow. Without hesitation, he asks her how all this happened because he had never seen symptoms like his. And he asks her to be honest and tell him what happened on the underground floor because having him now in front of her, she's very interested. It turns out that the world record for the lowest body temperature is 13 degrees, although the theoretical limit of a human can be zero degrees. But at those temperatures, human tissue would freeze and cells would be destroyed and even lower temperatures of 32 degrees can cause heart problems, and his temperature is currently 11.5, and it's a miracle that he's still alive. Tito Wang knew he was still alive thanks to his power, although he had no time to waste here and had to go to complete his plan. But because of how weak he was, he ends up falling. Chow mentions that she has discovered what his illness is, and it's that he has superpowers. Our protagonist plays dumb and asks what kind of joke that is. She mentions not to underestimate medical skills. Tito Wang obviously wasn't going to tell her and planned to get out of there as quickly as possible, but when he uses his power to escape, he spits out the blue liquid again. And since now he can't use it anymore, if that doesn't happen, suddenly someone knocks on the door. Chow already knew who it was, where we see her getting annoyed and quickly helps our protagonist up and asks him to please lie down. He obeys because he saw her very serious, but he asks her the reason for that. Chow only mentions that if he wants to survive, he should do what she says and asks him to close his eyes and not move when he hears something. He quickly opens the door, and we see that it was Lan who was knocking. He apologizes for the inconvenience. She very seriously asks him what he wants. He says that if it's okay with her, they can chat inside. Without more option, she ends up letting him in. Now alone, he mentions that he heard that this guy received treatment from her. She sadly tells him that he died poisoned. Lan mentions that it's a shame because he had something to ask him. Our protagonist, just by hearing his voice, knew it was that rat, and he gets upset because if he could use his power, he would have already annihilated him. Lan realizes that this guy just moved and asked Dr. Chow if she's sure he's dead because he just saw him blink and why she doesn't let him have a look too. She refuses, yelling at him if he doesn't believe her. Lan with a chuckle tells her that it could be a fake where he takes out some scissors and was planning to kill our protagonist. Chow couldn't stand it anymore and annoyed slaps him and yells at him if he's questioning her professionalism. The guys behind Lan tell her how dare she hit their boss and we're going to teach her a lesson for it. Lan asks his guys to stop and very seriously apologizes for being so disrespectful and tells her how can he doubt her who has saved so many of his brothers in the past. The path goes like this, so please ask him to calm down and whispers in his ear that she hopes he doesn't forget who has been taking care of her and her old underground clinic. So she asks him to think about it and get in touch as soon as he can. Xiao gets annoyed and says that's nonsense as soon as they leave. She tells the protagonist that he can get up now and knows he has many questions. Tito Wan doesn't respond, and she wonders why he doesn't want to eliminate him. She understood last time, but this time they don't even know each other, and why that woman wants to protect him. Now calmer, she asks him to please pass her clothes, changing scenes. We see that Lan was with his guys in the caldera, and he was very pensive because the internet has already fallen, and the government no longer broadcasts information. So it's most likely they've given up, and he mentions that this unusual cold wave may be God's punishment for humanity. We see that old Canaan was tied up there and screams why God doesn't punish sinners like him first. The guy laughs and tells him he's just replacing him as the administrator of the place, and if he doesn't think the order he's created is very harmonious, he yells that his order means forcing people to go out to look for supplies so that they give them to him later, or else he'll turn off the heating. Lan tells him that's fair because they give him warmth, and in return, they receive supplies. Tito K shouts that he's a monster. Lan doesn't care, and tells him that the boy who saved him went with St. Peter. Old K is shocked to hear that. Back with our protagonist, we see that he's already dressed, but it was very difficult for him to do so because he felt very exhausted. The waifu asks him how long he thinks he was unconscious. He says six hours. She mentions it was six days and many things happened during this time, like wrapping him in the heating, and the residents, in exchange for using it, must give supplies. And many people were forced to go out into the street. 
but as he knows, that's just walking to the gates of death. Tito Hang knew that guy was a real monster and asks Chow if there's any way his body can recover. She giggles and says yes, but she has conditions, and with a smile, she asks if he agrees. Our protagonist was aware that he had no choice and accepts without further ado. She gets very happy and mentions that he will be her research subject, and only she is allowed to study him, and not to worry, she won't put his life in danger. And as she said before, she's very interested in him. Tito Wang tells him that it's a deal. Xiao mentions that there is a substance in his blood, but she still doesn't know what it is. But she's sure that this substance absorbs thermal radiation, and that helps him turn it into energy in his body. But that only happens when his body has the necessary calories. In other words, his body has an additional means that can store energy, and his current state is that he's hungry. W asks if he eats, will it be fine? She says yes, but his body demands a lot of calories, and she doesn't have so much food to give him. Our protagonist plays dumb and tells her not to worry. He'll manage after a while. We see that he was going to go to his apartment, but he had to be careful not to be caught by Lon's subordinates because he didn't have the strength to defend himself. He finally manages to get into his house, but he realizes that all his supplies are frozen, and he knew those guys cut off the heating, but that didn't matter now. And he gets the food with the most calories, and it was a box full of chocolate bars. And holding one brought back very bad memories, but he eats it anyway, but notices that one is not enough, not two, not three. And so it goes on for a while eating chocolate, and he can't even control himself anymore. Suddenly the guys enter his house and notice that it was full of supplies. Our protagonist stands up, and the little rats are scared to death because he appeared out of nowhere. Changing scenes, Chow realizes that the analysis is ready, and as soon as she sees the results, she is surprised because if he eats too much, he will lose it. Control, and that was already happening, my king, and we see how Tito Wang was emanating a reddish aura different from the blue one he had before. The tough guys were going to teach him a lesson for scaring him. Our protagonist is preparing his fists because it's time to put them into action. 72 hours ago, we see that the waifu was in the underground floor and noticed a huge blue puddle, and like some kind of rare component where she puts it in a bag to analyze it later, and she sees a camera in the background. And if she wanted to know the truth, the only way was to go to the security room, and all that seemed very interesting to her. As she walked to her clinic, she heard someone asking all the building residents to distribute their supplies well, because from now on, everyone has to pay him in food to have heating. A man tells his friend that that's not Mr. Kian's voice, and wondered where he had gone, and it turns out the rats had taken care of him and took him to the boilers, as we all knew. Lon tells everyone that to show the seriousness of the situation, he will make a small demonstration where he cuts off the heating and orders everyone to bring him a sample of respect. Returning to the present, we see that our protagonist was a little crazy because he was talking to himself, and his other self asks him if he hated Elon. Just hearing that name makes him go crazy. And we see him grabbing one of the guys by the neck, and while he had him like that, he imagined he was Lon, and that puts him in a very bad mood, and irate, he sends him flying with a simple slap, and our protagonist was so strong that he managed to make him fall from the building. Some people are going to try to help him, but seeing him, they are shocked because that reddish aura had burned him and they wonder what happened because he fell from the fourth floor. Coming back to his friend, we see that he was scared to death and wonders if he was a monster. And what was that strange aura and he was aware that he had no chance at all to win. But he was going to fight anyway and he charges fiercely with all our protagonist who had overeaten had lost control. So he hallucinates with Nan. And we see him easily dodge the rat's blow and like a dog he challenges him to come again. The guy doesn't give up and pulls out his forbidden steps. But they don't help him at all. Because Tito Wang was broken and tired of playing with that fool, he was going to take him down once and for all, and he lunges fiercely towards the fake lawn, and with his simple hand he destroys him. Suddenly, Lian appears, calling him, and she had a gun in her hands, and without hesitation she opens fire. He realizes he had a dart in his abdomen, and it turns out it wasn't Yang, but Chao. She asks him not to worry that it's just an insulin injection. Our protagonist suddenly feels very tired, and ends up fainting again. The waifu quickly takes him in her arms, and seeing behind her she is shocked because that boy had a lot of supplies and plants at his house. Changing scenes, they tell us that the catalyst of human evil has always been hunger and war. But with the development of agricultural technology, human society is gradually becoming more stable. But despite all that hunger never goes away, and in this, there are exceptions to everything, and it's that this guy had a crop for himself. We see Chow leaning him against the wall, knowing it's embarrassing if he faints again, and he does have power. And as she waited for him to wake up, she carefully looked at his crops and, a little hungry, took a bite of a tomato and was fascinated because they were delicious, and all that would be enough for the whole building. Changing scenes, we see that a couple went exploring for supplies. 
The girl's stomach starts growling. Her husband, who heard that, asks if she can hold on. She says yes, but seeing her, he knows she's very hungry. He asks her to wait a moment because he has a chocolate bar somewhere, so he starts searching everywhere to find it and give it to his wife. She asks him to calm down and mentions if he doesn't remember that they gave it to their daughter in the morning. He apologizes with a smile because he had forgotten and promises her that he will find plenty of food for her and their daughter. Suddenly, a monster grabs him in an instant. His wife watches as the huge creature takes him in its hands and eats him in front of her as if he were a simple insect. Stunned by fear, she is unable to take a step, and the creature is about to take advantage of the moment to grab her. Suddenly, a blonde boy on top of an abandoned building tells her to calm down and come immediately. Here the girl comes to her senses and runs there as best she can, but the creature keeps following her because it won't allow its prey to escape. It lunges at her to catch her, but it fails narrowly. And due to its incredible strength, it lifts a heap of snow that sends the woman flying and ends up lying on the ground. The monster, seeing its meal served there, was about to take a nice bite, but to its misfortune, we see the blonde boy throwing a Molotov cocktail and hitting it directly all over the body. The creature screams from the excruciating pain. The girl seizes the opportunity to escape and finally manages to reach the building. She notices that the monster is no longer following her and feels relieved because she is finally safe. But she hears something approaching in the distance, and it was the fierce creature, and it was furious, so she made the waifu quickly presses the elevator button, because that was her only salvation, but it was already too late because the beast was in front of her, but blessed with the one above, the guy saves her again and asks her to close her eyes, she, of course, obeys him, and we see that the time of the show has arrived, and a lot of lights come on. The boy, like a true rocker, plays his epic guitar, and his melodies are reproduced on immense sound equipment. The creature upon hearing that goes crazy. Changing scene tells us that the girl is called Dorothy, and since she was a child, her dream was to be a doctor. But in the end, she became a nurse, but doing her job. That's how she met her husband in, and it was love at first sight when they finally went out together. They got married, and months later, their little Maggie was born. And then they move to a new apartment. But after that, it will only be her and her little one returning to the present. We see that Dorothy was amazed because that boy with his guitar is subduing the fierce creature. And as his song had already ended, he raises his hands like every guitarist. The creature that no longer hears the sound was going to take advantage of the bugaz to kill him. The boy who already CO expects. We see that he drops a bunch of steel beams from a crane that kill the horrifying monster. Dorothy couldn't believe what she just saw and knows that it's finally over. And because of that, we see her fall into a sea of tears. The boy approaches her slowly and with a smile asks if she's okay. After a while, we see that she was near a bonfire and was looking sadly at the family photo. She had the boy hands her a handkerchief and mourns her loss. And while smoking a cigarette, he mentions that besides mourning the dead, they must also protect the living. He notices that she keeps a deep silence. He apologizes for saying something so embarrassing. She introduces herself and curiously asks his name. He tells her his name is Cole. She thanks him from the bottom of her heart for helping her. He asks her not to mention it. Doherty asks him if he will also go look for supplies. He tells her that his situation is a bit complicated and asks her to wait a minute and start searching in his briefcase. He sees a photo and comments that he is from San Diego, but came here because he was coming to see a friend. Seeing the photo, he feels that the guy seems very familiar with our protagonist, and just as he was about to tell him, a great earthquake occurs. He quickly goes to see what is happening and sees in the distance a great horde of monsters. Dorothy realizes that they were approaching his building, returning to Tito Wang. We see that he finally wakes up and comes across the huge plot of Doc. He naturally gets very nervous seeing it and asks her what the situation is. With a little laugh, she mentions to him that it's just a safety measure for him. Wang knew that it wasn't a safety measure but a collar. Seeing him scared, she asks him not to worry. Our protagonist, annoyed at being tied up, tells her that the condition of their agreement was that he was her research subject, not her slave. She tells him he's right, and that's why that collar is a special tracking tool, and it reminds her of the things she told him about his body. She told him that it can help him absorb and store heat, and from the current situation, it seems that he has more than just this feature. When his sugar level gets too high, another state is activated, and this collar will change from blue to red when his sugar level is too high. Tito Wang. I didn't understand a thing and asked what the hell was going on, curious. I asked if he remembered what happened 20 minutes ago. Our protagonist tries to remember, but it doesn't work at all. The doctor tells him not to worry, and it doesn't matter if he doesn't remember. 
That's why she's here to see what's going on, and after all, that's part of her investigation. Wang Gare acknowledges that he always feels trapped by that woman, but he's going to tolerate it, because he also wants to know what's happening. We see Xiao press a key on her keyboard, and Wang's chair starts moving, noticing that he had a bag with 25% glucose next to him. Xiao is, if she is surprised because she has a big reaction, Tito Huan furiously yells at her what she did. She does not respond at all and approaches him and places a pot with a plant in front of him. Our protagonist did not understand a thing of what was happening, and suddenly his reddish aura intensifies and angrily yells, how dare she deceive him? Someone in the background laughs and slowly approaches him, and it was himself and tells him that he should see himself now. W asks what is happening, his other self tells him that they meet again. W realizes that he was going a little crazy and tells Chow that he is starting to see hallucinations, his other self tells him that he cannot hear him. Wang realizes that this is true and very seriously asks what he has done. His self says yes, but no. Wang says he does not understand. His other self tells him that to be precise, the two did it together and about who he is. Maybe that will remind him of the memory where he takes off the hood. Tito Wan is in shock, seeing him because it turns out that he is the parasite from his past life. He says that he is correct and both his power and resurrection were all thanks to him where he takes his humanoid form and asks that, from now on they get along. And if they got here is where we left off the previous chapter. We see that Tito Wang speaks for the first time with the parasite switching scenes. They tell us that the National Security Agency is a department that can still operate independently after other government agencies have been paralyzed because they have an administrative medical and military unit. And it could be said that it is the last guarantee of that new world. On the other hand, a girl named Barbara asks her subordinate Sophia if the network has been established. She says no, and the IT department informed them that it is a hardware problem, but now they cannot communicate with the engineering department. Barbara says she understands, and it turns out she was the leader of the biochemistry department, and a while ago she was looking at an old photo in which Dr. Chow appeared. Sophia informs her boss that she has finished the report. Barbara says that's fabulous and she will take it right away to that bald guy. After a while, we see that he was the head of the decision-making department named Franco and Refugio, yells at the BFU that it is not the time to be discussing that because first is the problem with the temperature, plus the internet network has gone down. And if that were not enough, they lost contact with their frontline group in the field 48 hours ago and he will not pay attention and let his soldiers fall like flies the waifu who does not take any crap. We see that she applies the legendary nutcracker technique and yells at him that it is time to stop practicing his policy. A few minutes later, we see that they were all gathered. Barbara says that is why she was so worried Franco is speechless when he sees what is in front of him and it was a white-skinned being, Sophia tells him that according to her observations, this creature is a mutation of humans. He does not believe it because that thing was a monster. Barbara asks him to look closely, and he realizes that the creature had a collar, which was an officer's tag, meaning it was true. The waifu tells him that the military got it outside the bunker with no vital signs, but 24 hours later, the body mutated in the morgue and became the thing he sees. And before they lost the signal, the CIA passed them vital information, and it was a video of a supermarket where apparently the first monster appeared, which they called Cell, and also the first person with superpowers, aka number zero, back to Tito Wang. We see that he was stunned because that worm turned into a beautiful girl we will call her Sin Rui. She saw his reaction, laughs, and mentions that humans are actually very shy. Our protagonist does not pay attention to her. And it seems that here time stopped completely. She tells him that it seems he can understand her. Tito Wang asks how it is possible that he can hear what she thinks she says, that it is very easy because they merged, and the reason for it. Because you can see her, it is because that woman injected enough sugar to activate your consciousness and the self that you see now is an illusion of your mind. He tells her that he understands and asks what the substance in his body is and what the state is. She comments that it is her blood and that's why he has superpowers. Our curious protagonist asks why she wants to be a parasite in his body. Sin Rui mentions that they are different from humans and do not belong to this dimension, and they need to merge with a native species of this dimension to understand it. She explains that her species has no name because they cannot define themselves, and their concept of time is meaningless to them. They have been drifting through various dimensions since their birth, and their strength is also a shackle, which is why they cannot interfere with matter in any dimension on their own, and wonders how they demonstrate their existence. Tito Wang mentions that Sin Rui seems quite lonely, Upon hearing this, she bursts into laughter because she feels hurt and asks if that is his human empathy, finding it very cute but having bad news. Since the moment they merged, empty shells have been searching for them 
and we see how the great horde of monsters finally arrives outside the building. Juan, furious, asks her what that is. Sin Rui refuses to tell him because he will soon understand and mentions not to forget to come to see her when he needs something and, with nothing more to say, disappears. Due to this, time returns to normal. Meanwhile, we see how the creatures were gradually taking down all the residents of the building. A boy, as best he can, goes to take refuge in the basement. But as soon as he arrives, he notices that the door is closed and tries to open it as best he can. But unfortunately, there were monsters behind him, and as they pounced on him, he breaks the door. The other creatures go in search of the guys who have old K, and without any problem, they take them down. Mr. Kyan knew that these were the things he saw last time, and realizes that they haven't seen him yet because they were collecting blood, and of course, he was going to take the opportunity to escape. He uses the trick from his youth where he dislocates his thumb, and thanks to that, manages to free himself from the bonds. While escaping, he remembers that there was a safe with weapons in the security room. And fortunately, those fools didn't notice. As he was heading there, one of those things notices his presence. Old K was aware that he was done for. Back with the waifu, we see that she mentions that indeed, as she thought, if she brings plants close to him, their growth is very rapid. Wang yells that if she has already confirmed it, she should let him go. She says there is no problem, but he won't be able to use his ability much, or he will faint again. Suddenly, a loud noise is heard as if something is slamming against the wall. They finally manage to break the hatch, and a monster appears. Sinrui whispers to the protagonist that it is an empty shell. He angrily asks why she is still here. She tells him it's not the time to argue, and if he doesn't do something, that woman will be eliminated. Our furious pro-ref goes over there but knew that women are very complicated, and like a true alpha male, he takes the beautiful Chow in his arms and manages to save her from the ferocious creature. Worried, he asks if she is okay, and notices that she was blushing, and is surprised that she can have that reaction. She tells him that it is quite interesting to feel his power up close. He tells her it's not the time for jokes because that thing is not playing. She asks what it is. He says he doesn't know but not to worry and to leave it in his hands. Xiao reminds him that he can't use his power much. He says he understands, and before starting the action, he tells her that her research methods are very unusual, but have really helped him, so he thanks her from the bottom of his heart. She mentions that she believes so too. That this is the time to talk about it, he asks for forgiveness and quickly gets into an attack position. Suddenly, the creature multiplies into many smaller monsters. Tito Huang was aware that this wasn't going to be as easy as he thought, but he didn't care and started using his forbidden moves. Meanwhile, we see that Chao was checking her limit. Our protagonist knew he couldn't overexert his body because he would pass out again, so he was optimizing his powers in the best way possible. When necessary, he would stop time to predict their movements, and when he saw an opening, he accelerated his fist and with a simple impact took them down. Chao was impressed because he had only used 10% of his power and shouted to the protagonist to keep going because he was doing great. Tito Wang knew she hadn't changed because she was crazy about analysis, but he didn't care anymore and, tired of these weaklings, launched an ultrasonic wave and wiped out the remaining creatures. She congratulated him because it seemed he had mastered his power. However, now she had many questions and sensed that he knew what those things were, and asked him to please tell her everything he knew. Changing scenes, we see that old K wakes up and realizes he had one of those things on top of him. He wondered what had happened, and when he removed it, he noticed he had a lever. He remembered that the creature had ferociously lunged at him, and he suddenly noticed the lever beside him, which he grabbed immediately and narrowly managed to get rid of the creature. Mr. K, as best he could, got out of there, but was aware that if he encountered those things again, they would annihilate him. Suddenly, he noticed someone calling him, which surprised him because he thought there was no signal. When he answered, someone mentioned they hadn't spoken in a long time, Mr. Machete. Mr. K was shocked to hear that. After a while, we see that Wand had told him everything obviously not mentioning that she had gone back in time. She told him that it was more or less what she expected and asked for help with the zipper. The curious one asked about the suit. She said it was a prototype protection suit from her previous workplace and asked him to look at the ceiling. As he could see, those things came out of the heating pipe and most likely damaged it due to the cold. Suddenly, they heard someone knocking on the door. When they opened it, they saw a little girl who turned out to be Dorothy Maggie's daughter. They asked her what was happening, but she didn't say anything and ran off. They, of course, followed her and noticed the staircase was filled with bodies, but from bullet impacts. Tito Wang asked her not to run anymore because it was very dangerous, but they got a big surprise when they found Mr. K lying there. He became agitated because that man had been very kind to him in his previous life, 
And in this one, where he took his hand and whispered that good people never have a happy ending, he told him he was still alive. Our protagonist was scared to hear this. Mr. K mentioned that he couldn't die yet because he owed him something. Maggie took Chow's hand and asked if she was a doctor because her mother had told her that if someone had a red cross on their clothes, they were a doctor. And she asked her to please save Mr. Kanan. Our waifu was a cold person, but that sweet little girl touched her heart. And she mentioned that today she would make an exception and give a free consultation. While treating Mr. Kanan, she asked what had happened. He mentioned that when he came out of the boilers, he was going to the security room but saw many monsters. He went up the stairs with the others, and as the creatures were following them, they had no choice but to keep climbing. Suddenly, Lon opened fire on them. He, of course, asked what the hell he was doing. Lon said he was going to use them as a distraction so he could escape. We see that the scoundrel was going to shoot Sweet Maggie, but old Kanan, like a true hero, took the bullet for her. That's how he ended up there. Chow managed to remove the bullet, but mentioned that he had lost a lot of blood and needed to rest in a safe place. Our protagonist said he would be right back. Old Kanan shouted that Lon was too dangerous. Tito Wan, with a very imposing aura, just looks at him changing the scene. We see that the rat of Lon was taking out everyone who followed him, and finally ends up arriving at the old warehouse, and was going to hide there because it was the safest place, but as soon as he was going to enter, someone shouts at him to stop. Obviously, it was our protagonist, and Refuge shouts at him that they meet again. The rat tells him how is it possible that he is alive, but he doesn't care, and without hesitation, shoots. But our protagonist, who was Repro, dodges his bullets like nothing, and already tired of that weakling arm and a leg, and takes him by his ugly face and leads him to the window. The rat begs him to please forgive him. Tito Wang is unmoved and acknowledges that he is right, and this world is governed by the law of the jungle, and only the strongest survive, and... Well, as you can see, it wasn't him, and without further ado, he ends up impregnating him with his aura that burns him completely and throws him towards the great horde below, and finally mentions that anyone who harms Lo, 